The first Dark Base 900 broke some ground when it first released offering a plethora of features and modularity and now Be Quiet has released the official second version of the Dark Base 900, the Dark Base 900 Rev 2. This case has a ton of detail so let's explore it and see if it's a worthy upgrade from its predecessor. Hey what's up guys, my name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, guides, mods, and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider checking out the rest of the channel and subscribing. The 900 Rev 2 is very similar in terms of design to the Dark Bay 700, which is the little brother to this case. If you want to see a full in-depth review of that case, you can check it out in the card. I recommend watching it in comparison to the Dark Bay 900 Rev 2. The 900 Rev 2 is a full tower chassis and offers a lot of similar features that the 700 has, but offers a bit more. More. Once again, the 900 Rev 2 has the brush aluminum panels both in the front and the top and even the bottom of the case. There are different trims including orange, silver, and black. Personally, I prefer the RGB LED strip that outlined the case of the Dark Bay 700. The front facade is closed off once again with air ventilation coming in from the sides of the case. That ventilation now stretches around the perimeter of the case on both sides. Any incoming or outgoing airflow will have to make a 90 degree turn. There are some air vents on the top panel in addition to the side vents, but how this will perform in terms of thermals we will test later. All of Be Quiet's cases are constructed in priority to silence so the trade for thermals for silence is usually prevalent. Anyways let's talk about the dimensions and what this case is capable of handling. This is a massive case coming in at 577 millimeters long, 243 millimeters wide, and 586 millimeters high. So it should go without saying that this case supports anything from mini ITX to EATX motherboards. As tall as this case is the interior is relatively compact especially with a radiator mounted on top. The fan blades sometimes hit the CPU fan header cable because there's not much clearance at all. CPU cooler height has support up to 185 millimeters, which will pretty much house any massive air cooler you decide to throw in it. Fan and radiator support is ridiculous, so I'm not going to list the entire thing out. Instead, I have it on the screen and you can pause the video to have a better look. There's also three included 140 millimeter silent wings, three fans inside the case, which go for around $20 each. So that is definitely a good start to a fan setup. It's also worth mentioning that you can mount two fans to the bottom of the case and also to the rear of the panel. The rear panel has a pop-out cover that can help increase airflow from the back of the case. It even has its own dust filter. Overall, the dimensions can fit pretty much any piece of consumer-grade hardware inside, but it is restricted in terms of height inside the case. There are a ton of features with the case, so it will work from the outside in. On the front panel, it operates as a door to the front fans and the two 5.25-inch drive bays. The door opens by pushing in the corner and pulling open. There is a magnet to hold the door into place. Additionally, the door hinges can be moved over to the other side of the door so it can be opened up from either side, whichever one you really need. The 5.25 inch drive bays have two covers which can be removed by squeezing in the tabs and pulling out. They also have a dust filter built into them. Alternatively, the 5.25 inch drive bay can be removed completely and replaced with a fan rail to mount an additional fan. The additional fan mount is included in the accessories box. Above the 5.25 inch drive bay is a fan slider which controls the included fan hub in the rear of the case. If the slider is moved to the left, the fan hub is regulated by the motherboard PWM fan controller. If it is moved to the right, the PWM signal is ignored from the motherboard and the fan hub regulates the fan speed. The fan hub in the rear is the same one used in the Dark Bay 700. The fan hub is separated on two rails which are individually controlled by either silence or performance mode. Moving back over to the front of the case, the front I.O. is everything I can ask for. There's two USB 3.0 ports, a USB 3.1 Type-C Gen 2 port and a quick charge port for your phone. On the top of the case, there's a wireless charger, which to some may seem completely pointless, but being able to charge your phone without having any additional cables going to your desk is always nice. Unfortunately, I don't have a phone that can take advantage of that, but hopefully soon I can. There's a dust filter that spans the entire length of the case and sits on the bottom and is accessed through the front panel. And there's another dust filter for the front intake fans in the front panel. Tempered glass removal is the same with the four thumb screw design that sits on top of the rubber coated pegs. It's okay in my opinion, but Inwin and Cooler Master have developed much simpler and easier solutions. Front panel removal can be tricky as well. It has four tabs on each side to be pushed inwards and out in order to remove. You don't have to push all those tabs in simultaneously, but it can take a minute to remove. Also, make sure to remove the bottom dust filter before removing the front panel, otherwise you'll take it with you. Top panel removal is similar with the eight push-in tabs, but it's nice to have access 
to the top of the case and also have enough height for a standard AIO radiator. Rear panel removal is removed with two thumb screws, which are capped thankfully, but the panel has to slot in and hinge into place in order to install. The interior of this case is very similar to the Dark Base 700. The PSU shroud is modular with removable covers to increase airflow and additional SSD mounting in the center. There are expansion slots on the right for storage, which gives plenty of options for storage or room for water cooling. The entire motherboard tray is invertible as well and completely removable, so if you decide to turn it into a test bench, you can certainly do so. Now let's talk about that PSU shroud. It's completely removable but not without a fight. First, you need to remove two screws from the bottom edge of the case, another screw in the rear that's attached to the frame, and another screw attached to the PSU mounting frame. Make sure not to lose those screws because I sure did. Anyways, you can then remove by lifting up on one side and pulling up the other, but it often gets caught on the frame and moving the shroud out of the case is easier said than done. It's honestly a bit of work and it is not easy to install later on, but you do have full access to the bottom of the case, which is nice. The PSU mount is inside the PSU shroud instead of being attached to the frame. This is mostly due to reduced cable length since it's a larger case. You can move the frame to either the left or right side and can be mounted further towards the back or front of the case. In order to gain access to the frame, you need to unscrew the two screws attached to the side of the chassis frame, which can strip pretty easily, and also the screws holding the mounting frame into place on the bottom of the case. Finally, you can screw in the PSU. Alternatively, you can remove the rear metal mesh behind the PSU and screw in the PSU from that angle, but it is the same amount of work either way. The PSU mounting is convoluted and tricky and not nearly as seamless as the Dark Base 700. No matter how you install the PSU, you still need to access the rear of the mounting frame to properly install it. Adding on to the feature set of this case, the entire bottom can be separated from the case with the removal of two screws and sliding it out of the frame. This gives direct access to the feet, which can be removed and replaced as well. Storage options are fantastic with the option to mount a total of seven 3.5 inch drives or 14 two and a half inch drives in total. At the bottom of the case, there's a drive cage for two three and a half inch drives or two two and a half inch drives. The HDD slot covers can be removed and replaced with drive cages for either three and a half or two and a half inch drives, giving a ton of flexibility for storage. There's also one SSD mount in the rear of the case and another on top of the PSU shroud. The accessories box is jam packed with a bunch of goodies. It comes with three extra drive cages, a water pump mount, the fan mount add on for the front fans, a large HDD slot cover in case you remove the 5.25 inch drive bay cage, assorted screws in plastic bags, which is okay, and you also get an extra box for RGB LED strips. The RGB LED strips are a nice touch, but they use adhesive instead of magnets and can fall off pretty easily, especially when mounted on top. I really wish they were magnetic or were built into the case and that they had some sort of light diffusion instead of the bare LEDs. There aren't many options to mount the LED strips without being directly visible, but I have one on the front panel which got in the way when placing the PSU shroud into place or removing the PSU shroud cover. It's not that you can move it too much further to the right either since you need room for the front panel tabs. I managed to make it work, but it's a tight fit and a bit askew. The build experience was good for the most part. The case has pre-installed standoff screws, but I needed a few extra for my board, but there were no extra standoff screws, which was a bit odd. Luckily, I had some extra on hand. The only thing that gave me a ton of trouble was installing the PSU shroud back into place. Other than that, everything else went smoothly. The chassis has cable routing holes all in the right places and gives a superb amount of options for routing cables, especially since you can use the HDD slot covers as extra cable routing, especially when you have an EATX motherboard installed. The rear of the case does not have much room at all in terms of depth for cables. It's a bit lackluster in my opinion since the depth of the rear wall is only around 20 millimeters. Also, I tried routing the front IO cables next to the HDD slot covers, but you can't have too many cables on that side since the rear panel needs to hinge in the place and also slot in. So I had to reroute those cables, which really weren't too much of a problem. There's a good amount of cable tie down points for cable routing, but I would like to see the entire rear panel utilized for cable management and not just this section primarily. I did really put it to the test with the cable extensions though, so I was able to do a fairly clean job of cable management. But even with my rerouted front IO cables, there were issues putting the rear panel on since the pegs that hold on the air vent cover on the rear panel kept interfering with the cables. So I pushed out the air vent cover to its last notch on the pegs, which worked but still was interfering with the cables. I honestly wouldn't mind if this case was an inch wider to have fantastic accommodation for more cable management.
management. Alternatively, you could shove a bunch of cables into the PSU shroud, but the cable length on some of these cables had them ending up in the position on the rear wall that you see right here, so not much I can do there. The last thing about cables is that all the cables going to the bottom of the motherboard are pretty visible since there's an open slit between the shroud and the case wall. It's not horrible, but it's hard to make it look nice. I wish there was some sort of bottom motherboard mounted cable cover that could screw into the case wall to hide those cables. Build quality of this case is of course outstanding. Be Quiet really nails it when it comes to build quality. Every single detail is made with fantastic quality from the rubber feet to the thumb screws. Modularity also plays a factor into the quality of the case and of course it has it. Thermals and noise performance is pretty important so let's go over that. Inside the system is an 8700K overclocked at 4.7 gigahertz and a GTX 1080 Ti. With the panels on we have fan options for silence, performance, and PWM which is controlled by the motherboard. With the panels on the PWM fan control had the 8700K around 53.7 degrees over ambient. Silent mode on the fan hump bumped it up to 58.7C and performance mode had it at 51.7C. Total noise production is what you would expect for the different fan speeds. With the panels off there's a significant drop in temperature across all three different fan settings. Just look at the PWM control. There's a difference of 7 degrees which is a 13% margin. Another thing to note here is that it is also slightly quieter by a few decibels compared to having the panels on. Now you might be saying well what's the point of having those panels on anyways? Well the noise cancelling padding helps eliminate certain frequencies of noise to make it sound quieter without it actually being quieter. GPU torture testing had the 1080 Ti at 45.9C over ambient with the panels on and 42.9C with the panels off. This was the PWM fan speed on the fans controlled by the motherboard. The change in temperature is 3 degrees Celsius with the panels on and off so GPU thermals are all around pretty good. The Darkbase 900 Rev 2 is a $280 case which is slightly higher than the original Darkbase 900. However, it does include some new features like the modular power supply shroud and three new silent wings three fans. The case has a fantastic aesthetic all around although the aluminum panels attract fingerprints like crazy. A lot of features are shared with the Darkbase 700 and the original Darkbase 900. This chassis has a lot to offer in terms of flexibility but it has some shortcomings because of it like the PSU installation and PSU shroud removal. The RGB LED strips should be magnetic or built into the case instead of using adhesive. The four thumb screw design has been done away with by other companies and improved on. The rear panel slot and hinge method can be difficult to work with when there's a lot of cables. Room for cables in the rear is too shallow for the caliber and size of the case. The space between the top of the motherboard and the frame is too narrow and should be taller. And the struggle between airflow and silence is a constant battle with this case. I would much rather opt for a larger mesh design with the panels still containing the sound dampening material. The Silent Wings 3 fans are more than capable of pushing air silently without the panels even on the case. They're brilliant fans and this case should let them handle the silence and performance rather than the case trying to do so by restricting airflow. With all that being said, there is a lot going for this case. Build quality is exceptional, storage options are vast, which is perfect for what I need. The three included fans are excellent fans, the case has a ton of modularity, and the interior design design is very clean. The case aesthetics are beautiful and there's a lot of included accessories in the packaging and not just a couple zip ties. The DB900 Rev2 is a niche case and I personally like the DB700 over this case. But the 900 Rev2 has better storage options and easier accessibility to the top fans. I like this case a lot but it certainly has room for improvement. If you were considering the original DB900, the Rev2 is a good case to look at despite some of its shortcomings. If you're interested in this case, a link will be in the description below. Alright, so I hope you all enjoyed the review. I just want to let you guys know these reviews take a long time to make. Sometimes they take weeks and they take a lot of man hours. I'm only a one man team over here. So it takes a long time to make the kind of quality that I put out to you guys and hopefully that shows. So any sort of support is incredibly appreciated. I don't have a Patreon set up yet, but I will soon if you guys will be interested in supporting the channel and keep these videos coming often pretty much. But I do have a store if you guys want to check it out and it will help support the channel where you can pick up PC art like that right behind me and also merchandise and t-shirts like this. So if you're interested into that sort of thing, it'll be linked up in the card over here or in the description below. And if you guys are new here and you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing, checking out the rest of the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.